Allen, and she would like to address the court at this time. I want to thank you for being with us this afternoon. I know this is a difficult proceeding for you. Would you be kind enough to state your name for the record? Angel Flora, F-L-O-R-E-S. What would you like to say? On January 23rd, I walked into a nightmare. I walked into my son dying. He, his brain was six inches out of his head. He had IVs in every part of his body. All they told me was he was hour by hour in critical condition and that he probably wasn't gonna make it. Every day I stood by that little boy, I never left him for anything. And I prayed to God every day to keep him. And I told Mikey every day not to stop fighting because I needed him. By the seventh day, Mikey was fighting against his ventilator. And they kept telling me that we, we think that he might make it, but his quality of life, he'll probably be on a ventilator. And everything I kept praying and praying. And they took, they removed his ventilator and he was breathing on his own. And then he opened his eyes and he would look at me and he would squeeze my hand. As the days went on, we kept having surgery after surgery, complication after complication. I couldn't begin to tell you the things that were wrong from potassium levels to just everything. It was a hundred labs every day. The blood they took from him was just crazy to sit there minute by minute and watch him. On February 14th, Mikey said, Mama, and they told me he would never talk again. All I told Mikey was that it's okay that I knew he could not talk, that it was okay. So I taught him to communicate with me the best that I could with signs. As the time went on, he just got better. His nurses, his doctors, nobody, nobody ever thought that Mikey would talk or wake up. Our team consists of 120 doctors at Metro. By the time we were there nine weeks in Metro PICU, Mikey had endured 11 brain surgeries. His brain, they, Mikey's the first person in the world to survive his injury. I, I don't know if you're aware of that, but he is. They did not know what was wrong with him. They, they tried their best and we have some of the best surgeons. So his swelling in his brain that was on his head did not start going down until seven and a half weeks in. When it went down, they finally put his skull back. It was his skull was fractured in two places. They put it back. We went to the Cleveland Clinic Children's Rehabilitation. Now that day, they sat Mikey up on his bed. Mikey had laid in a hospital bed for almost nine weeks. He screamed so loud that it was unreal. He couldn't hold his head. There was five people helping my child sit up from his waist to his stomach to his neck to his head. Every day I watched him fight at the Cleveland Clinic and I would stand back and cry, but I knew he needed to do it. Mikey started walking again. After six months, he could walk with a lot of assistance. He wears a brace on his leg because of his paralysis of the left side. His leg sits like this and needs to be stabilized and put down. He was in a wheelchair for 14 weeks. He came home in a wheelchair. Since then, we have had two more emergency brain surgeries. Michael's skull sinked in on his own head about four inches. He can't see. He can, when he looks, he has to look like this and continuously turn his head to even watch TV. <laughs> So they had to remove his skull to relieve some of the pressure. That was that picture. That was Thanksgiving. He ended up having an infection. We went back in on December 23rd. They told me Christmas Eve he needed to be rushed in for emergency surgery. So we went back in. <clears throat> and then being our 14th brain surgery, and they removed Michael's skull. We have spent every holiday except for Halloween in the hospital since January 23rd of last year. Every holiday. Even though what she did to him, the one thing she didn't take from him is his, his happiness. 
That little boy woke up that day right there, and he smiled at me. And he said, Mommy, come play with me. That's all he wants. He is the happiest child in the world. Whenever I was 13, I was kidnapped and raped from the Cleveland Rapid Station on West 65th. My serial rapist was the first person caught in Ohio using DNA. His name is Nathaniel Ford. He was just charged this summer on four more counts of old rapes that they tested. That day, whenever I was 19 years old, I came to the stand and I faced that man. And I told him that that day I met the devil. Little did I know he would be an angel. She is the devil. What he did to me does not compare. I was kidnapped, raped, and beat for hours. What she did to my son is a million times worse. I would let that man walk free to know she would spend the rest of her life in prison. That's horrible. She is a monster. She beat my child so badly. He had marks from his head to his toe, his back, his genitals. His genitals were so bruised. My son won't even let someone change his diaper. In the hospital, the nurses have to wake me up at any time to change him because he won't let someone come near him. Every day, I wonder how, how could you beat him so badly? 